And now at the Brooklyn Heights Library. Thank you so much for being here. And I am thrilled to be accompanied by the legendary Alex Rybeck. And that is not a euphemism for old. <laughs> legendary, he has worked with absolutely the best of Broadway in the business and cabaret world and tours the world. And we've been talking for quite a long time about collaborating. And this is the first time we're actually getting up on the stage. So thanks for being here. We, um, I know most of you, is anybody here for the first time? Anybody here? Oh, wow, yeah. thanks for coming. Is anybody here for the last time? <laughs> you never know. No, never. I hope it's not. But we've done 226 shows um, since May 1st of 2020, and some of you have been to about 223 of them. And um, I'm noticing that the weather hasn't been so conducive to the outdoor shows anymore. So we're gonna try to continue the tradition indoors, 
Um, I'm actually going away for the summer to St. Louis to do Donizetti's Don Pasquale. I'm really excited about that. And um, I will pick this up again in the fall, and I will always put the information on www.songsfromtheledge.com. All right, but um, this is basically end of season farewell uh, to so many of my friends. Um, I always dreamed of being on Broadway when I was young, and then as I started to study voice, I dreamed of singing at the Metropolitan Opera, and I ended up sort of somewhere in the middle around 59th Street and Columbus Circle, <laughs> sang a few operas at the Rose Theater with the New York City Opera, and then during the pandemic, Everything was shut down, and I started doing these soup concerts, really just to keep us from losing our minds. And uh, my friend Marcy Chapin, my neighbor, encouraged me to come out and sing for the, for the 7 o'clock applause for the healthcare workers. And it soon became a thing, got a little bit of attention. I was named the Brownstone Baritone by Susie Weiss in the New York Post, and uh, Deborah Norville on Inside Edition said, he's the hottest ticket in town. He's the only ticket in town. So. <laughs> That's exactly. Anyway, I'm gonna um, tell you the story of how this happened via this song. I'm just the brownstone berry walking up my tired feet, scouting Hicks and Henry Street to be a show. Brownstone berry. Making news on New York One Hoping that the folks have fun When I do my show Oh, gee I'd like to be on some marquee All twinkling lights Clark creates a spark At the watermark Over <laughs> open heights Something may be Jesse Green will give a nod. Hey, I play the promenade to be in a show. Hey, Mr. Producer, I'm talking to you, sir. I don't need a lot, only what I got, plus a Bluetooth speaker and a crowd that's hot. At a private school, kids of literati who put me in their show. You think, right? Lean up, Brooklyn baby, singing karaoke tracks, stating on my income tax that I made no dough. Then in the pandemic. I got a mention in the post. I mean, the quarantine was just the scene to make me the toast. Deborah Norvell said I magic on the stoop. Susie Weiss gave you the scoop. Now this big canary's gonna wake up the library on the brown stone. getting an MRI. I had to get an MRI for my knee recently, and I was like, how am I going to kill this time? I was like, I need to do some new lyrics for the show. It's amazing. Anyway, the knee, the knee's doing better. I know some of you have been seeing limping around the neighborhood. What happened? I'm like, I don't know. I don't feel old, but my skeletal and muscular system begs otherwise. Anyway, uh, I started off, my very first show I did in high school was uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on the Roof, and uh, I was a bottle dancer, and I practiced that bottle dance over and over, and then not that long after, got to do the bottle dance again in a local semi-professional production, did 60 times, my mom always bragged, I never dropped the bottle. <laughs> It's not that hard. But anyway, the idea of getting on my knees and sliding around with a bottle on my head is kind of out of the question right now. 
Um, I'm mentioning this because um, this morning I woke up with a lot of people letting me know that the great Sheldon Harnick has left the building, the 99-year-old famous uh, lyricist and uh, operetta translator, um, Sheldon Harnick, wonderful man, Alex did quite well, um, has left us. And um, somebody, a friend of mine said, you could do a Sheldon Harnick tribute. I'm like, I wish I'd had a little more notice. But then I thought, let's do a little something to honor Sheldon. And um, we put this together via text, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> Exactly, that's the way we roll. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a little tribute to Feather on the Roof, um, which we've just put together when you guys were waiting in the hall. So. <laughs> complaining, but what would have been so terrible if I had a small fortune? If I were a rich man, all day long I'd be the very one. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. If I were a really, really rich, little, 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 little man, I'd build a big, tall house with rooms by the dozen right in the middle of the town. 
A fine tin roof with real wooden floors below. There would be one long staircase just going up, and one even longer going down, and one more leading nowhere just for show. I'd fill my yard with chicks and turkeys and geese and ducks for the town to see and hear. Squawking just as noisily as they can. And with this <laughs> we land like a trumpet on the ear, as if to say he lives a wealthy man. All day long I bitty bitty bum If I were a wealthy man I wouldn't have to work hard If I were a bitty bitty rich A deal I'm a sugar idle man I'd see my wife by golden looking like a rich man's wife with a proper double chin supervising meals to her heart's delight i'd see her putting on airs and strutting like a peacock boy what a happy mood she's in screaming at the servants day and night the most important man in town will come to Posing problems that would cross a rabbi's eyes. Mahi Abai, Mahi Abai. And it won't make one bit of difference if I answer right or wrong. When you're rich, they think you really know. If I were rich, I'd have a time that I like to sit in the synagogue and pray, and maybe have a seat by the eastern wall, and I discuss the holy books with the learned men seven hours every day. This would be the sweetest thing of all. If I were a rich man, all day long I'd be picky bum. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. Yeah, I should be what I am. Would it spoil some vast eternal plan if I were a wealthy man? Thank you so much. Jerry Bach and Sheldon Harmon. Um, I've been thinking a lot about songs um, that I grew up with, and for those of you who've heard me a lot, I, you've probably heard all my greatest hits, and then I've learned a lot of new ones for you. During the pandemic, we spent a lot of time at home, and I'll tell you who loved it. Pets. Our pets loved it. I had three cats, and just, you know, I was working from home, teaching from home, and. They were just like slinking in and out of the out of the Zoom screen, whatever they wanted, and um, I really I, that's that's one thing about the pandemic I miss is being able to spend that much time with my pets. And my beloved Peter, Peter P. Peanut Butter, went to Jesus last year. I just had two cats, but um, this song that uh, I'm going to do next is from the musical Nine. It's about which is based on Fellini's Eight and a Half, 
and the protagonist is the film director Guido Contini, who's having a midlife crisis. And it, it's a lot of, is this one? Um, the, the, the show is populated only by women, the musical. Originally started um, starred while Julia. It was directed by Tommy June, who Alex has worked with a number of times. And um, the song I'm gonna do next is called Only With You, and it's really about Guido trying to juggle his affection um, between three different women, his wife, his mistress, and the star of this movie. And every time my cats would all get on bed with me, vying for my attention, I think that's, that's kind of what this is for me. <laughs> Being just me is so easy to be when I'm only with you. Open inside and with nothing to hide from your view. Seems long ago I was destined to know, and the moment I saw you I knew I could be totally happy with no one but you. After passionate died, I give over to you. Utterly changed, I'm at each prearranged rendezvous. Lured by the fire of your endless desire, I still wonder the way that it grew. Never elusive, it comes from exclusively you. Finding a special person we can love is so rare. How in the world can there be two? Send me a love, I will mend me with love. I am desperate for you. Giving you chase like some goddess of grace, I pursue. Blinded by need, I will follow your lead. Monkey see, monkey say, monkey do. Taken for granted, completely enchanted by you. Small wonder it seems that my life's made of dreams and of wishes that never come true. I wouldn't be lonely if I could be only with you and you and you I don't understand how this is about your cats. I said, I was thinking of doing it with puppets. He said, I'd have to see it. <laughs> anyway, love the song so much. Love my kitty cats. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down my nostalgia path a little more for you today um, and talk about the first time I had a leading role in a musical in high school. So I, did, I was Ali Hakim in Oklahoma doing a weird Persian accent that was really Rosanna Rosanna Dana from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Don't cancel me. And um, on the, it was in Thunder on the Roof. And then I, I was in Damn Yankees, um, which is based on the year the Yankees lost the pennant. And I was Joe Hardy. And Joe Boyd is the retired Washington Senators fan who's going nuts saying, one long ball hitter, that's what we need, one long ball hitter, I'd sell my soul for one long ball hitter, and enter Mr. Applegate, the devil, who makes a Faustian bargain with him. And he sells his soul, and he gets to be transformed after a flash spot into Joe Hardy, me. <laughs> Joe Hardy, like, you know, big, strong baseball player, but it was really kind of like a pretty gay-looking 16-year-old kid with a center part wearing his father's Lacoste shirt. But anyway, but it was the first time I, I was singing with my kind of mature voice, and uh, um, my parents 
we're just losing it in the audience. And my, my dad had never heard me sing like a big high note on stage. And I was a boy soprano in the choir, but you were at my changed voice. And um, so for the rest of my life, he'd say, give him the note, just give him that note. The one note, I think it was an F. Give him the note, and I'd be like, dad. But he just thought, you know, to have, this, to be able to stand on stage and sing one big high note, he thought that was worth more than anything you could ever ask for. So I sang this for him at his memorial, and um, I'm gonna bring it back to the show today. Um, this is Goodbye Old Girl from Dan Yankees. <laughs> Goodbye, old girl, my old girl. When you awaken, I'll be gone. Can't tell you where I go. It isn't fair, I know. But trust in me and carry on. Goodbye, old friend, my old friend, there's something I should let you know, I haven't said it much, I guess I've lost my touch, but my old girl, I love you so. Now I know it hasn't all been rosy We've had squabbling days when tears were brought about But in a moment or two We would fill and coo And never even knew what we fought about And now your joy to go, but he'll come back to you someday, so sleep your sleep, old girl, our love will keep, old girl, till then. How? And know your joy. ago and my mom was uh, and some of you met her she came to, she came to the 99th concert for her 90th birthday and uh, my mom was always driving my brother and sister and I all over Westchester into the city for our music lessons and our acting lessons and our dancing lessons and um, I remember she we, she drove us around in a, in a VW bus and she she was a napper we'd say she never slept through the night she'd catch naps but she would um, She'd be so tired, she'd come to a stoplight, and she'd close her eyes and she'd just say, wake me, but it's green. <laughs> wake me, and it's green has become, you know, how I live my life. I get to the elevator of the mansion house, I'm like, press six, wake me, but it's green. Um, and uh, my mom remarried four years ago, a high school friend who was also my godfather, Peter Smith, who's still with us. And um, they had been traveling together for a number of years. Um, both widowed, and uh, so she thought they, she texted my brother and sister and I to say, um, wanted to reach you all at the same time. Peter and I have decided to marry, details to follow, love Anne. <laughs> she wasn't asking her permission. She was just letting us know via a group text she was gonna get married. And um, she, I think she was a little shocked when she discovered he was gonna move in, because he lived on the West Coast. <laughs> he was like, yeah, let's move in. And so, 
Um, this song always makes me think of her. It's called Marry Me a Little from Company. I think she wanted to get married a little. <laughs> Wasn't ready for the full commitment. And then this, uh, I'm gonna put it together with a song from Follies. Um, so Company and Follies are sometimes two back-to-back -back, you know, masterpieces from the early 70s. And I mean, I was always listening to them in the car. And first saw them in you know, community theater productions, probably the first ones that were done. Um, I was actually cast in a production of Follies to be young Vincent in the tango d'amour, and then they cut it. So my first time on show, I was fired from. Well, it was cut. Um, so I'm gonna put together these two songs um, for you, um, Marry Me a Little and Could I Leave You. Marry me a little, love me just enough. Cry but not too often, play but not too rough. Keep a tender distance, so we'll both be free. That's the way it ought to be. I'm ready, marry me a little, do it with a will. Make a few demands I'm able to fulfill. Want me more than others, not exclusively. That's the way it ought to be. I'm ready. I'm ready now. Sighs, sullen glares from those in 
said, you got to go into the city and audition for this new show called Merrily We Roll Along, which was being was like going to be the next great Sondheim Harold Prince collaboration. And I went in, uh, took a day off from high school, went in and sang my song, and wasn't cast. It's OK. Um, and, and Alex actually worked on the show. I'm sorry now, because it closed in two weeks. I know, exactly. I know, it had a lot of previews on it close in two weeks. And to show that everyone's always trying to work on it, it goes backwards in time. So these three friends who um, you discover at the beginning of the musical, they've all completely drifted from their dreams and youthful ideals. And as the show progresses, you, you realize that they were, I don't know, you sort of discover their story in reverse. Well, my story was I didn't stop uh, pursuing my dreams of performing and 30 years later uh, Harold Prince cast me in his production of Candide for the New York City Opera which for me was just a dream come true I couldn't believe I was getting to work with this legend and um, and all, which was also conducted by his son Charlie and we got to do the show a couple times and uh, anyway th these two songs really mean a lot for me when, when Sondheim passed everyone was putting up their tributes and people who known him and worked with them but I realized if you loved Sondheim or you've ever done his shows, you felt like you had a personal connection with him because he really sort of taught you how to how to live or to love. And you know, I, I uh, I've learned a lot from Sondheim's lyrics. Um, uh, lyricists aren't really 
They're not therapists. They don't necessarily know more about life than you do. And I always remember when I'm singing uh, Alan J. Lerner's How to Handle a Woman, he was married seven times. I mean, he really, he really knew. Um, anyway, these are two of my favorite Sondheim ballads we're gonna do together. Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. Nothing's gonna harm you, no sir, not while I'm around. Demons are prowling everywhere nowadays. I sent them howling, I don't care, I've got where.
is Pride Month, and I'm going to do a final set with uh, three of my favorite songs. Um, the first one is written by uh, Jason Robert Brown called Hope. It's from an album he wrote uh, called um, How We React and How We Recover. How We React and How We Recover. That really has nothing to do with pride. I just love the song. Uh, I've sung it a lot during uh, during these years I've sung for you, and it's really about like how we how do we process, how do we move on from terrible things, and we've experienced a lot of them together. And then uh, last, the next two songs, uh, one is by um, Lynn Aarons and Stephen Flaherty from their musical A Man of No Importance, which was originally produced at Lincoln Center Theater, and just this past year had a wonderful revival at the CSC. And for quite a few years, at somewhere for Pride, whether it's for New York City Opera Pride in the Park, or some other Pride event, I've sung uh, I Am What I Am. I saw the original Lagaja Paul, and I mean, I just couldn't believe it. It was just amazing at the time. And you know, it was, a, it was uh, it, the AIDS epidemic was just, just starting up, but it was a time when suburban audience was, were starting to be comfortable with the story of gay love in a Broadway musical. And um, I just think it's such an incredible song. I've, I've sung it for years and years uh, with a lot of love. So that's my next set. right now, but even so, I came out here to sing a song, so here I go. I guess I think that if I tinker long enough, one might appear. And look, it's here. One verse is done. The work's begun. song about hope, in spite of everything ridiculous and sad, though I'm beyond belief depressed, confused, and mad, <laughs> well, I got dressed, I underestimated how much that would take, I didn't break, until right now, I sing of hope, and don't know how. So maybe I can substitute strength because I'm strong. I'm strong enough. I got through lots of things I didn't think I could. And so did you. I know that's true. So we sing a song about hope, though I can't guarantee there's something real behind it. We have to try to show our daughters we can find it. And so today, when life is crazy and impossible to bear, it must be there. Fear never wins. That's what I hope. See, I said hope, the work begins.
so we sing a song about hope. Though I can't guarantee there's something real behind it, we have to try to show our daughters we can find it. And so today, when life is crazy and impossible to bear, it must be there. Fear never wins. That's what I hope. See, I said hope. The work begins. How could I dare Someone like me Who's been mainly Nowhere But in my experience Be as it may You just have to love Who you love You just have to love Who you love Your common sense tells you best not give in, but your full heart cannot help plunging in, and nothing and no one can stand in your way. You just have to love who you love. You just have to love who you love. People can be hard sometimes, and their words can cut so deep. Choose the one who choose love and not lose a moment sleep. Who can tell you who to want? Who can tell you what you were destined to be? Take it from me. There's no fault in loving. No cause for shame. Everyone's heart does exactly the same. And once you believe that, you'll learn how to say, I love who I love, who I love. Then just go and love. It's pretty, and so what if I 
if I love each feather and each spangle, why not try to see things from a different angle? Your life is a sham till you can shout out loud, I am what I am. I am what I am, and what I am needs no excuses. I deal my own death, sometimes the ace, sometimes the deuce. I just thought, well, he's got to be here right now, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and he says, I'm in the elevator. I'm like, good. And he goes, it's locked. Oh. Oh, what? And I see there's one elevator at Clark Street that's, oh. that's you know, it's out of service. I'm thinking, so I was there for like 15 minutes thinking, this poor guy's locked in the elevator, and he's not returning my text. I'm like, I'm like, this is like, this is like, this is like a submarine situation, like, like search and rescue. And so I get them to go down and open the elevator. But no, he was in the library. Like whatever, we just missed each other. Like that library. Was like, he was in this elevator. So anyway, I, I got here like in a, in a sweat. Like oh my god. Um, and we do have. I you know I like to do the encores that no one asked for. And uh, that actually wasn't the end of the show. But we'll, we'll, we have a couple more songs. If you're, I don't know, you got some place to be? Okay. I will tell you that um, when we started doing these concerts, the great Brian Stokes Mitchell, Stokes to his friends, had recovered from COVID. Who hadn't? I had COVID. I had COVID before all of you. Anyway, he had been singing The Impossible Dream on his balcony on 79th Street or wherever he lived and drawing crowds of thousands. And then the police had to shut it down because it was too dangerous and too many people and people, you know, you know how people are. The moment something's happening, they take out their phone and walk into traffic. Uh, that's not how you want to go. So um, when we started doing our shows, immediately, I think like the second night, there were like 100 people and there was concerns about the crowds and the police were coming and checking it out. And I said, listen, it's not going to get out of control. I don't have a Tony Award. <laughs> However, I do now have the Brooklyn Heights Association yes. Community yes. Service yes. Award, which we call the Boney. I do have the Boney. Not just the Boney now, and also the Brooklyn Heights blog, 10 Most Influential People in Brooklyn Heights. I was like, I already knew I was an influencer, but I just, it's just been confirmed by the BHV. Anyway, um, the Impossible Dream has been a kind of a theme song for this series and has meant a lot to us. And it's honestly, it's one of the roles I'm just dying to do in my life. So, if you know anyone producing it, please. Yeah. Brownstone Marriage on Instagram. <laughs> Shall we? To dream the impossible dream. To forget. Excuse me. Hold on, still again, I'm burnt, and then I forgot the lyric. I am. To dream the impossible dream. To fight 
the unbeatable foe to bear with unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare not go to ride the unrightable wrong to love your and chase from afar to try when the arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star this is my quest to follow that star no matter how hopeless no matter how far to fight for the right without question or pause to be willing to march into hell for a hell recognized everything she didn't know what it was but this aria she knew it's she was like that's the one I like it's from La Traviata act two it's uh, Father Germain at trying to get his son to come back home um, it's rather manipulative but it's very beautiful and so um, when I would visit my mom and sing some songs when it was time to go I would always sing this which was really I should have started with it because it's kind of the hardest one I've been mean, so many times I sang it for her, I'm like oh my god I can barely get through this aria oh my god Anyway, so, um, and I sang it for her a lot right at the end, and um, I, I, ha I don't think I brought it into the series much, but uh, I'm going to just, you know, fly it up the flagpole and see who salutes it. So this is um, Di Provenza in my soul from Verdi's La Traviata. <laughs> Provenza mari sol, chi dal cor ti cancello, chi dal cor ti cancello, di Provenza mari sol, alla Dio fulgente sol, qual destino ti furò, qual destino ti furò, alla Dio fulgente sol. Ora men da pur nel duol chi vi gioia te brillò, e che pace con la sol su te splendere ancor può, e che pace con la sol su te splendere ancor può. Dio vi guidò, Dio vi
Genitore, tu non sai quanto soffri, tu non sai quanto soffri il tuo vecchio genitor. Te lo nano di squalor, il suo tetto si coprì, il suo tetto si coprì di squalor e di squalor. Ma se il fin di trovo ancora, se me sfeme non fallì, se la voce dell'onore in te pieno ammutì, ma se il fin di trovo ancora, se me sfeme non fallì, ti ho besaudì. I would never leave you. I know. You know about it. I sat, I've done the musical Camelot uh, four times as King Arthur, and um, the first time I was ever on TV was doing, really, it's not the Arthur song, but uh, the big hit, if ever, I would leave, if ever I Would Leave You. And once I started doing these concerts, my YouTube video started getting a little, get, getting a little attention. And uh, not that I checked, but I noticed it was just up to 13,000 views, <laughs> which is a lot, right? Around some baritone. Um, and then I start to read the comments, and you know, they're quite positive, until one day some guy writes, good but not Goulet. <laughs> and I wrote back, thank you for giving me my epitaph, good but not Goulet. And he was like, oh no, I hope I haven't invented you, you know, but in my opinion, Robert Goulet was the greatest bearer on every greatest Broadway stage, and you're obviously well trained. Sorry if I have offended, and I said, Thank you for giving me my eulogy. <laughs> anyway, life is really lived in the YouTube comments, you know? Anyway, um, thank you so much to um, Alex. Yes. Are you leaving? Let's do, let's do If Ever I Believe You. I know he already left the building. Elvis has left the building. All right, this is the last one, I promise. And I'm gonna miss you guys, have a great summer. Yeah, we'll see you all soon. Toujours j'ai le même vœu sur terre une déesse au ciel un dieu Un homme désir pour être heureux sur terre une déesse au ciel un dieu Years may come, years may go, this I know will ever be so the reason to live is only to love a goddess on earth and a god above. If ever I would leave you, it wouldn't be in summer. Seeing you in summer, I never would go. Your hair streaked with sunlight, 
your lips red as flame, your face with a luster that puts gold to shame. But if I ever leave you, it couldn't be an autumn. How I leave an autumn, I never.